in case you didn't know, in case you didn't know, the broadcasting behemoths that are Television New Zealand and Radio New Zealand, both state-owned, one more a public service broadcaster, Radio New Zealand, than the other, which is a publicly-owned commercial broadcaster, being Television New Zealand. They are, for whatever reason, <coughs> being merged by this Labor government at a cost of around 350 to 3 Hundred and seventy million dollars. The legislation to achieve this is currently before a select committee, though the details of that legislation and the law change weren't really fully announced until after people had put in submissions on the change. Um, and meantime, it would seem to me there is much emphasis on the role of the media, particularly the news media in the changes that are occurring in our society and some of the conflicts or debates we need to have in our society. There is no doubt that in a country of 5 million people, public broadcasting can have a massive impact on the body politic and the societal consciousness of a nation. And that for that reason, what happens in the public broadcasting space is very, very important. I'd hope to have Willie Jackson on, and I had to, I'd promised him I wouldn't talk about this because it's before the select committee, to talk about a whole lot of other issues. He has cancelled the date on me for Friday. But one person who is willing to talk about the merger and other issues, like F-Boy Island, is the National Party's broadcasting spokesperson, um, um, uh, M Melissa Lee, and she joins us uh, by video link, thankfully. Now, Melissa, how are you? I'm very well. I had no idea that you wanted to talk about uh, some TV programs. I have no idea that, oh, that okay. you were going to ask me you, this. You're not aware of F-Boy F Boy Island? Uh, I, I, uh, only, uh, only what I've actually read in the media. Yeah, yeah, well, that's all we are because TVNZ aren't talking about F-Boy Island. They seem rather... <laughs> Look, just let's get that out of the way first. So TVNZ have bought the rights for God knows how much for a format which has a bunch of guys half of whom are so-called nice boys and half of whom want to sleep with women um, and then have nothing to do with them. And it's a competition where three girls have to guess who are the nice boys and who are the F boys. Apart from that, that um, horrendous concept for a program on so many levels, what do you think of the fact that a state-owned broadcaster has paid for the rights of that, is making and airing such a program and in fact had a contestant on one of those programs who had um, taken advantage of a drunk woman and put his hand over her mouth to stop her screaming for help. Oh, appalling. But, you know, I don't think politicians can actually dictate what is actually on our TV um, um, programs, uh, on our TV uh, channels. And But, I mean, the decisions to make and whatever they actually want to show is theirs. And if people don't like it, they'll turn off. And I guess that's one of the reasons why the government thinks that they need to merge Radio New Zealand and TVNZ, because people are turning off. Yeah. Um, well, or they're turning on to other things, Melissa. Um, our exactly. I guess those, yeah. I mean, they can find other, other content like that elsewhere. So maybe TVNZ thinks that they have to put those kinds of shocking programs on. Yeah. Well, I guess, look, you, man, you've dived in conceptually really, really deep. So, as you say, people are getting their information and news from somewhere else, which I think scares the hell out of all governments. I think it would scare the hell out of a national government too because news media is a way to control narrative and control people or a populace. Um, but the fact is, in the age of the internet, do we even need to have public broadcasting or public media? Well, I think, you know, I, I'm a proponent of uh, local content, and I think it's really important for us to actually provide local content and a balanced and fair and, you know, accurate news. So who's, when you uh, say us, what do you mean by us? New Zealanders. All okay, of us so that. so if it's commercially right, viable, that'll happen. Why why does the government need to be involved in that? 
well, well, this is the reason why I'm opposed to the idea of merging Radio New Zealand and TVNZ, because I mean, especially in a cost of living crisis, when they're spending 370 million, and I say 370 million because it is almost 370 million, it's actually 369 million. So it's 109 million per year, that's new money, 41 million to actually implement the change, meaning yeah. to establish it, and $1 million to monitor, that's Three hundred and sixty-nine million dollars. That's a lot of dough. That's going to be used up. That is a lot of dough, and you know what? That can actually clear the wait list of people waiting for cancer medication, mm. and then they'll have money left over to actually deal with the wait list of surgeries. Mm. Tens of thousands of people waiting for surgeries are not being looked into, and mm. yet they actually want to merge Radio New Zealand and TVNZ. Mm. So, what is the rationale for this that is emerging through the select committee process? What is the government well, saying I mean, the, the advantages will be of this? Well, obviously the minister appeared before the select committee, which was actually aired. And, you know, it, it, it seems very clear when he appeared and actually spoke to the select committee that, you know, um, there isn't a clear narrative as to why they actually did it. I mean, I even asked him during question time last week where where the cost benefit analysis was and where why it actually didn't actually need to, uh, uh, Treasury didn't even do the work that they were supposed to do because they said, oh, they've done a business case. You know, so regulatory you know, <laughs> impact statement wasn't even done. And, you know, when the minister invited me to uh, come up to his office to, so he can show it to me, so I did. I actually went up to his office. Well, not quite up to the office because I couldn't get up there. I waited downstairs in the lobby and one of his staff members brought uh, down what was supposed to be the regulatory impact statement. It was one A4 size page with highlighted bit, like a paragraph, which said that it didn't need a regulatory impact statement because they've done a business case. Well, what the business case that Tracy Martin, who was the chair of yep. the Former advisory New Zealand board, first MP. Yeah. yeah, and basically delivered for the former minister was the fact that this merger was necessary, but all of the financials are redacted. None of the financials are available. So how is the select wow. committee or even parliament able to decide whether what they actually deemed, you know, financial reason why they have to actually do this is actually, you know, yep. even remotely close to what needs to happen. Yeah. And so we're the select committee is blind in terms of the financials. And, you know, we've actually requested it, but we haven't received it yeah. yet. Now, one thing that has been uh, prominent in, in news media in, in the last week or so is that the production industry in New Zealand says the fundamental change and my understanding is this new, if you like, super broadcaster, the new merged entity, rather than being allocated its funding through a funding agency like New Zealand On Air, much more of the money is going to directly go to this entity that will then decide uh, how to spend it and what to spend it on. Uh, prominent uh, producer John Barnett um, from the Stream, as it's great, Sparta Screen Producers and Directors Association, says this is going to destroy our local industry, that the new entity will take production in-house. And without this independent funding allocator, um, the local production industry uh, will effectively die. Do you agree with that analysis? Well, I think to well to a degree. Uh, I think you know. I think they're reacting to the eighty four point eight million or eighty um, million that was going to be um, you know literally going from New Zealand on air part of cash to the new uh, the new ANZPM entity because when you know when the new entity already has three hundred seventy million that is actually being spent on, the minister has actually deemed that they also need to be given extra eighty four point eight million, and that that makes up. <clears throat> the roughly about 43, I think it's 42.6 million for Radio New Zealand operating funding. Yeah. Um, um, so the like the uh, like two million dollars of TVNZ contestable funding that they already got through programming that they actually funding that they get they already get from um, uh, New Zealand on air currently and also extra forty million. I think that it's the forty million portion that people are actually talking about. If you know that forty million state with New Zealand on air, it will remain as a contestable funding available for um, content makers, content creators to actually apply to New Zealand on air to get funding but this will be literally going to ANZPM to do what they want with it yeah 
In a bro- I come back to this broader question. In a free market, why is there any government involvement in broadcasting, television production, radio production, news production, internet production? Surely, commercial reality and good journalism would say you just leave this and if people want and need these products, businesses will arise that can do those things. There is actually, in the year 2022, no reason to have any government involvement in broadcasting or news media. I agree with that statement in most parts. Uh, There are some programming that people don't actually um, uh, make without government intervention, like children's programming. Well, then it's programming that people don't want, right? Uh, Children don't spend money. (laughs) Yep. And uh, No, but the thing is that you actually want programming for New Zealand children from New Zealand perspective, and I, I think it's actually a good thing. Okay, so you would get rid of all public broadcasting apart from kids' programming? Well, I mean, there are others as well, you know, but the thing is, it's um, it's it's like, but one thing that I agree, news news is not something that I, I think any politician or uh, government should intervene in terms of funding and how they're actually made. All right. All right. Is there in reality um, anything you can do with a government that's got a complete majority to stop this legislation, this merger going through? And do you have a plan, Melissa Lee, with the government to change to roll it back or to create something that, to your mind, is more reasonable way by way of a public broadcasting structure? Well, right from the beginning when this was actually planned, I, I was um, completely against it. But one of the issues that we face is that this will be done by March the 1st mm. and the entity will be established by July the 1st. So it literally ties the hand of a future national government, for example, if uh, you know when we win the next election. Uh, having said that, I've always been quite a pragmatic person. I was, I, I, I've actually publicly said that I'm not going to spend, you know, good money over bad to try, you know, um, roll it back. But the more I hear the submissions, you know, um, I mean, we've had like, you know, close to a thousand submitters uh, submit uh, written submissions to the select committee, and you know, sitting down and hearing submissions. I mean, you know, majority so far have been opposed to the idea. Some actually uh, support it, but they actually feel that the legislation. Is is so bad that it actually needs a lot of work before you can actually put to um, our practice. And, you know, it, people are quite worried. Um, mm. And I think, you know, we need to take time with it. But I think the government is intent on actually getting this done by the dates that they actually intended, which is March the 1st, to mm. be established. So, I, you know, I, I'm just really worried. Um, you know, the, the you know, some of the ideas are laudable. You know, they actually want to have, have you know, fair... Um, public media, where people, you know, balance reporting and all of that stuff. But huh. the thing is that you know, make a change. The people, yeah. it, the people moving away, and the trust, as even Willie Jackson said, people don't trust the media. I mean, you know, people moving away from our news entities. I mean, the very fact that the government's actually funding this uh, potentially may even mean that you know, even with so much money being spent, you know, not many people are going to be, you know coming onto the new uh, platform or the new entity. Mm. Uh, they, uh, you know, I just worry that they won't trust it and we've actually, we would have yeah, I don't think they trust. Uh, I don't think they trust TVNZ or RNZ, certainly not in the news, um, in the news context. Now, I, I do want to ask you a technical question as well as Melissa, uh, as well, Melissa. We had um, a clear undertaking from Broadcasting Minister Willie Jackson that he would appear on the platform on this Friday. Um, and early this week he pulled that commitment. He broke his date with me on the grounds that he couldn't talk about these issues while they were before the select committee. Given that he's made his submission and appeared before the select committee, are you aware of any procedural rule that says he couldn't have come on and talked with us? Well, the thing is that the uh, the select committee hearings are public, so it is actually aired on the select committee portal, yep. so the public can actually see it. So I can't imagine why he wouldn't be able to talk about some of the submissions. Yep. There are some submissions that are, are private, uh, which is actually not... Yeah, well, I'm not going to ask available. him about those. He just says, while well, there's a select committee <laughs> about broadcasting, I can't talk to the news media, and I just think he's telling me porkies, Melissa. 
That's right. I think it is. It has already aired. I mean, you know, if yeah. you go to the uh, uh, Economic Development Science Innovation Select Committee Facebook page, yeah. uh, you would actually see the video. Yeah. Do you think, and here's the big question at the end of all this, Melissa, do you think the public get a better publicly owned media out of what is being proposed or not? Because I guess at the end of the day, that is the litmus test. This is the whole thing. I mean, you know, when you look at the big picture and the idea of wanting a public media where they actually want programming that is not F-boy um, <laughs> and, you know, are talking about communities that are underserved. I mean, you know, those kinds of notions are really laudable. Yes, you know, but, but the thing is, it's like it is uh, actually about audiences. What do audiences actually want? And I don't think they've actually looked at or uh, talk to the audiences and say, what do you actually want to see or listen to? And I mean, that was the biggest mistake that Radio New Zealand made earlier um, uh, last year when, you know, they wanted to um, cancel Concert FM and actually wanted to go into youth programming. And I think, you know, when you consider the fact that um, people are moving away to different streaming options or even YouTube or any, any other social media type kind for entertainment and news, and they're not watching our traditional media, then you actually need to think about how do we actually get the New Zealand content and information to the eyeballs that are actually on different platforms. I mean, I would have, I would have if I was... Well, see, I'd argue, Melissa, I'd argue, Melissa, him, I'd I'd argue, Melissa well, your view of what New Zealanders want should have nothing to do with it and I would leave it to the free market for um, commercial yeah, entities to make yeah. stuff that is view viewable. And, and really, politicians just shouldn't have anything to do with it at all. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> sorry, not trying to make you redundant. Well, Melissa, I know this is going to roll on um, and in the expectation there will be a change of government next year, um, there is still much change and much chaos to come uh, in the sector. I thank you for at least for joining us, um, even if Willie Jackson won't. And uh, I would I would suggest to you strongly, um, you might want to get on to F Boy Island uh, as an issue, because I think most New Zealanders, I, I, New Zealanders may not know what they want from public broadcasters, but they don't want F Boy Island. That is clear. Thank you very much I think indeed. It's what you don't yeah. want. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's Melissa Lee. She is the National Party's uh, broadcasting spokesperson.